All right, welcome everybody to the midterm review for midterm two. Uh, just checking to see who uh, was paying attention, who, what percentage of this class is um, watching the lectures. So it looks like it's about 75%. Uh, <laughs> so in the middle of the last lecture, uh, I said the magic word is flugelhorn, and then uh, I can find out who's actually watching and who's not watching the videos as the result of that. <laughs> and um, yeah, so fractals exhibit the self-similarity principle. And that's something that comes up a lot in computer science and in real life as well. So we're going to talk today about midterm <coughs> two, which will start on Friday at the end of class, 11 o'clock in the morning. On Friday, it will open. The window will open. And when you click on start, you will have a set period of time to take the midterm, just like last time, same rules as last time, and it will close, hard close, on Monday after spring break um, at the start of class, 10 a.m. So don't start at like 9 a.m. on Monday, um, you know, 9, 9.50 on Monday, hoping to get more time. It's not going to work. Okay. Uh, yes, we have class on Friday. Um, So we have class on Friday, but the good news is um, what's what we cover on Friday won't um, be on the midterm. So, um, all right. So topics. Uh, where is my pen? Topics for the midterm. The big thing is fallacies, right? So this is what we're going to spend most of today going over. We're going to be going over fallacies. There's going to be a lot of fallacies on the midterm. Okay, um, That's probably the majority of the points. Um, everything from midterm one is still a fair game. You know, we got things like truth tables. There's always a truth table assignment on my midterms and finals. Uh, truth tables, then you have your valid, you know, invalid sound that everyone loves um okay that you know all the stuff from midterm one um will be on the midterm as well fallacies is the big one um make sure you study that put some arrows pointing at that and that's what we're going to spend most of today on and then we're going to have all of the uh, social issues in computer science as well And uh, all those different topics that we talked about, uh, which include things like um, uh, media, uh, you know, the news, um, uh, manufacturing consent, um, mm -hmm. uh, the whole like bit with like racism and stuff like that. Racism, algorithmic bias, uh, and then uh, framing, of course. I've got a few good questions already made for framing, and assumptions. Let's see what else we go. Uh, fallacies and cognitive biases, right? Um, uh, science. big thing in that is like p-values simply because um, after reading over your um, good scientific papers <coughs> it seems like about a third of the class uh, didn't understand what a p-value was so I'm gonna put it on the midterm so that you guys are kind of uh, gonna have to review it and understand what it means because it's actually kind of important every time you read a science article or a science paper if it doesn't have a significance value it's just like okay sure you, you said your piece, but there, I have no reason to believe you. You know, 
it's, it's entirely possible that your result was due to chance. Um, the other thing would be like n, like if the size of a study is like eight, you know, we took, uh, we took eight people, divided them into two groups, had four of them eat broccoli and four of them not like, yeah, the study size and is the study size, right? If it's too small, it, it may be interesting, you know, as like a follow up kind of thing, right? Or like, oh, you know, look, eating broccoli, nobody who ate broccoli got cancer. Yeah, but there were four in the group. So, and you studied them for a year, you know, like it, it may be interesting to study, to do a, a bigger study on, but I would not, you know, science journalists make up a headline saying broccoli cures cancer or whatever, which, which is the nonsense kind of stuff that you kind of come to expect from science journalism in this country and other countries as well. Um, scientific method. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, autonomous vehicles. Ethical systems, of course. Big one. Is not. So the divide between what is and what should be, right? So science can tell us what is, you know, if you were to pluck uh, the string on this guitar, you know, a string of a certain length will give you a certain frequency. Um, it doesn't tell us what it to, what it should be tuned to, right? Like, here's uh, my game controller, right? Science can tell us what frequency we'll get from these strings. It does not tell us if I should use, you know, standard tuning or, or drop D or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Right? There's a fundamental divide between what is and, and what should be. And typically with um, with people who confuse those two things, they typically use a very naive sort of utilitarian view like, well, um, you know, we, we should try to minimize harm, you know, or, or minimize suffering and that kind of stuff. Um, but then that's just presuming an ethical system, right? So the way that you, you bridge the is ought divide is via ethics, right? You need to have an ethical framework to, bri to bridge that. So, um, and those ethical frameworks are things like natural rights theory, um, utilitarianism, deontology, virtue ethics, divine command theory, that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, I don't, I don't know if any of those ethical frameworks will tell you how you should tune your guitar, but you kind of get my point, right? That just because you can say how things are, doesn't mean you can say how they should be. In order to do that, you have to have a framework in place, a value system, and values are kind of a weird concept in science, right? <clears throat> you know, because science is just describing the world, you know, the only ethics you have is like to not lie, I guess, you know, for, to make an observation faithfully and report the results faithfully and to share your results, you know, without trying to distort the truth. That's the ethics of science. But like, when you get into like, okay, what policy should we make? Um, you need some sort of ethical framework to do that. Um, modus ponens, modus toyens, invalid, valid, sound, scratch. Yeah, we'll do a little bit with scratch on here. Oh yeah, housing crisis. I was just talking to Scott last night about uh, Elon Musk buying a 9% share of Twitter, what that means. So that was kind of fun. That's everything. Yeah. And then we'll get into set theory after the midterm. Guitar Hero? Uh, Rocksmith. So, um... So basically, um... There's, uh, this game called Rocksmith. And you, it's like Guitar Hero, but you actually play it with a real... Um, you play it with a real guitar. So... Um... 
you just plug a um, you just plug a USB cable uh, into the quarter inch socket. You plug the other end of the USB cable into your PC, and then when you play the guitar, the notes appear on the screen, and yeah, you, know, you can, in theory, learn to play the guitar that way. Uh, for me, it's just more of a video game. Anything else? Oh. Um, you're messing around. No, it's, yeah. I I don't know how to play the guitar. I just use it as a video game control. Um, I did have it set up though, and everything because the um, when I got it, the frets were too long, and so when I was sliding on the on the neck, it would like slash my fingers, and so I, I took it into Patrick's music and um, the uh, the tech there, Shelby Weatherby. Uh, or Sean Weatherby, um, I'd consider a friend of mine. Uh, he filed down the, the frets and things like that. He actually spoke live to this class. He's a comedian, and he spoke live uh, in this class last semester, kind of like uh, what uh, um, my friend Scott did earlier. Clone Hero is pretty fun. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the thing about Guitar Hero and Clone Hero and things like that is that playing, you know, it, it's just not exactly accurate, you know, because you're just playing the frets instead of playing the strings. So, I think, <clears throat> I think Rocksmith is better, especially since they have um, downloadable songs, right? So anybody can make up a song, put it up on the website, and then you can download it. And so you're not limited to just the limited library that is in the uh, official releases. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any questions about the topics? We're about to get into the We're about to get into the uh, the fallacies and stuff. Yep. Probably, I don't know. One question on each of these something like that. And then, um, yeah, maybe, oh, oh, there was one I forgot. Yeah, that's right. And that is uh, types of uh, types of arguments. And you have deductive, inductive, and abductive. They all seem to do pretty well on the quizzes this year, much better than last year's students. So I'm not too worried about this. We can go over that as well. How many questions will, will, will there be? Um, I just kind of start writing questions until I've covered all the topics. So, 30-ish, um, something like that. Uh, is going to ask us the cat's name. <laughs> uh, the cat's name is Scratch, I think, right? Um, how can Scratch be questioned in the midterm? So, Nothing crazy, but you're just going to have to code up like a Riemann sum solver or, um, you know, just some basic, you know, calculus, integral, you know, area under the curve kind of thing in scratch. It shouldn't, it shouldn't take you too long. You should be able to do it in 10 minutes or so, right? <clears throat> nah, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, just basic things. Basic things in scratch. Um, for example, if you did the Space Invaders assignment, you know, um, you should, you should, you should be fine. Okay, right. uh, let's talk about fallacies and cognitive biases. So I put together a, a cheat sheet for all of you, and it's up on the files section on Canvas, so please read it over and, uh, um, understand it. Okay. So the fallacies cheat sheet has a bunch of these things. I think we covered most of these. We, I don't think we did an appeal, argument to moderation this semester. Uh, I don't think we have the cognitive biases in here either. Maybe I'll maybe I'll add those as well. Okay, so let me let me toss out some arguments, and uh, and you tell me what fallacy they are. Okay, so. Like I said, this is going to be the majority of the points on the midterm. So uh, let's play a game of Jeopardy or something. Okay. So suppose uh, person A says, uh, you know, we need to uh, drive uh, electric cars because, um, uh, because
because of climate change, right? Uh, Gas-powered cars produce carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide uh, causes the environment to heat up. And then person B says, um, well, I don't think global warming is real because then I would have to drive an electric car. What a fallacy did a person B make? Person B is saying, I don't want to believe that because I don't like the outcome. And of course, it doesn't matter whether or not you like the outcome. If the outcome is the outcome, the outcome is the outcome. Okay. It is uh, appeal to consequences. This is the fallacy. Appeal to consequences. Uh, what about... Um, Um, I, I, I don't drive Honda motorcycles because I drove one once and it broke down. So they're all terrible. I once drove a Honda motorcycle, it broke down on me within the first year of owning it. Therefore, all Honda motorcycles are terrible. What fallacy is that? I've experienced with one and I'm going to generalize that to all of them. Yeah, false generalization. Right, good. Um, now, if you do that deliberately, like if, for example, you're in the media and you interview, um, I don't know, a part-time dog walker to make an entire group look bad, uh, what's that called? When you're picking a person very deliberately to portray a group as uh, laughable. Cherry picking, very good, very good. So cherry picking is a form of uh, false generalization, right? And it's also done in science if you want your stats to come out the right way. You, you just select the uh, data that looks good for you and you sort of ignore the data that doesn't look good for you. That's a, a bad science, by the way, don't do that. Um, all right, so what if I said, um, I play Rocksmith Therefore, I should be president of the United States. I play Rocksmith with my uh, electric guitar controller here. Therefore, I should become president of the United States of America. I mean, we all know it's true, but like, okay. Uh, what, uh, what fallacy is that? I'm saying one thing, and the conclusion doesn't really connect to it in any sort of fashion. The logic does not flow at all. It's a non sequitur. Yeah. Um, and if you do it deliberately, it's called a, the glove does not fit. You must acquit. You know what else doesn't make sense? Wookiees. Wookiees are from Kashik, you know. What was Chewbacca doing on Endor? What is it called when you're deliberately doing non sequitur? Red herring, yeah. Yep. Alright. Um, yeah, I think everybody knows that it's red herring, right? What argument is that? What fallacy is that? Yeah, everyone knows that I'm the best computer scientist in this house. <laughs> what is it called when you uh, just say, well, everybody agrees this is true, therefore it's true. And, and sometimes it's not a fallacy, by the way. You know, if, if you say, uh, you know, Everyone agrees that McDonald's fries are the most popular. Well, I mean, that's what it means to be popular, right? Everyone agrees it, but um, yeah, uh, just because people agree on something doesn't make it true, right? Except in limited cases, like when you're talking about popularity, right? 
in that case, it's kind of tautologically true. Okay, yeah, so that's ad populum. So ad populum is when, um, ad populum is when, uh, you know, everyone knows something yeah, to be true. And uh, similar to ad populum is when an expert does it. So my doctor says I should read How to Lie with Statistics. So I'm going to read How to Lie with Statistics. My doctor says that 9-11 uh, was an inside job. Therefore, it's an inside job. What, uh, what fallacy is that? Populum, ad populum is when it is a broad group of people, you know, uh, a million Frenchmen can't be wrong, they say. Often used in advertising. You should buy this truck, it's number one truck in America. Ad vercundium, yeah, appeal to, appeal to authority. Um, yeah, and so there's, there's probably a fine line here that isn't worth, you know, studying for the midterm, because I, I don't usually shave the questions that closely. But there is appeal to authority, and then there is appeal to improper authority, right? And so appeal to authority is in general when you say something is true because an expert told me. And that's sometimes like, it's sometimes okay, I guess, because it, it's not like, you know, if Neil deGrasse Tyson tells me something out of a black hole, it doesn't make it true, but at the same time, Sometimes the question isn't whether or not it's true, but whether or not you should believe something. If, if that makes sense. Because, like, I don't know anything about black holes. I've never touched a black hole. I've never licked a black hole. You know, I I don't know anything. Like, I mean, I, I've seen science fiction shows and things like that, but I've never studied black holes. And so if Neil deGrasse Tyson told me that if two black holes hit each other, they'll merge into a bigger black hole, I'm inclined to believe him. Now, him saying that doesn't make it true. But at the same time, like, oftentimes the question isn't what's true, but what you should believe. You know, is there adequate justification for belief? And I think Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's a famous astrophysicist, if he tells me they'll merge, okay, I'll believe him. You know, I, I think that's adequate warrant for belief, you know. Um, uh, warrant for belief, you know, like, I, yeah, it doesn't make it true, but, you know the best we got and whereas appeal to improper authority is pretty much always fallacious right like if you ask like um i don't know me <laughs> right if you ask me hey kearney what happens if two black holes merge together i'm like oh they're gonna they're gonna fight it out and split into millions of smaller black holes like you're you're asking the wrong person and you should not believe anything i have to say on the topic of black holes because i don't know right so improper authority improper authority Right, and so there's there's probably you know it's probably worth understanding there's a difference here. This is basically always wrong, right? You know, it's just this is just a no, <laughs> right? You ask your doctor about black holes, um, unless he happens to also be an astrophysicist. Um, probably improper authority. You ask uh, your neighbor, hey, do you think that uh, aliens are real? And they're like, yeah, totally. Like, unless they're in, you know. They work for SETI, you know, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, probably not the right authority to believe, right? So uh, we see this all the time, right? In 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 um, in real life, you know. Can you guys give me any examples of like when the media interviews um, somebody on a subject that they don't know anything about, and then they go on the news? You know, asking people about the war in Ukraine when they're not experts on it. But your neighbor is so trustworthy. Yeah. Does anyone, anyone have any uh, examples of like when the media interviews people on a subject they don't really know anything about? I mean, for me, an easy one is actors, right? For whatever reason, um, the uh, the media loves interviewing like actors on their opinion on like, what's your opinion on? tax policy you know like why are you interviewing Jim Carrey on tax policy you know like you know what does Will Smith oh well, what does Will, Will Smith know about uh, you know international politics you know like why are you why is this you know and they do it of course for for the clickbait 
you know, like come see this, you know, come see Gwyneth Paltrow talk about politics. You know, like you know, it'll, it'll get views. You know, but it's still uh, an appeal to improper authority. Uh, CNN Joe Rogan thing with Sanji Gupta. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and so ivermectin. Like, there's a big study that just came out that I think finally settled that iver ivermectin does nothing against COVID. Um, and this is actually something we've talked about like every semester in this class because it's like an open question. Like, you know, there was a study that had some preliminary evidence that showed that it worked against COVID. And then there were a series of studies after that that showed it had no effect, right? And then you had Trump saying uh, it's a wonder drug against COVID. And then you had some people taking veterinarian ivermectin, uh, like horse medicine, horse dewormer, to like try and sometimes prophylactically not get COVID and then dying from it because they're eating like something not meant for humans. Um, like is this, and, and it's a big, you know, one of these things. And the proper authorities would, of course, be the people, the scientists making the papers, right? And the improper authority would be like Trump, uh, Joe Rogan, things like that. But at the same time, <clears throat> if you look at, you know, CNN, CNN handled the issue very badly as well. Like they, they, they said that Joe Rogan took horse dewormer and he didn't. He's like, look, I'm a person who has money. I can afford person medicine. You know, and his doctor prescribed it. it wasn't like he just like went to the local vet and got some paste and like stuffed it in his mouth. His his doctor prescribed it for him, and CNN framed it. Earlier topic, Let's scroll up here. Framing, uh, CNN framed Joe Rogan taking ivermectin as him taking horse dewormer, and it it, it was such a bad frame that like it, it was pretty much like lying, right? Like. Because he did not take veterinary medicine, he took people medicine, you know. But their their defense was, well, ivermectin can be used in horse dewormer, and he took ivermectin, so it's not a lie saying he took horse dewormer. And he's like, this is people medicine; it's like an anti-malarial, you know, that my doctor prescribed to me, you know. And, and they framed it so badly that there was a lot of uh, flack. Remember how we talked about flack when we talked about manufacturing consent? Sometimes the media behaves so badly that there's a huge amount of blowback against them. And uh, CNN actually apologized to Joe Rogan for uh, uh, their, how badly they framed the issue. So, um, uh, Joe Rogan has no medical credentials. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and so it was a really interesting topic on that, you know, on that basis, right? Because, like, Joe Rogan's like, eh, whatever. Yeah, we're going to do this. And, uh, and so, like, kind of, you know, CNN did a CNN thing of just framing things incredibly poorly if they don't. Yeah, if, it, if it's a topic that doesn't agree with CNN, they, they will, you know, sort of frame it as, you know, in a, yeah, I, in that case, I'd say they're basically lying, you know, it was more or less an outright lie. Um, so, yeah, so, interesting, yeah, there's fallacies on all sides, you know. Okay, um, what if, uh, what if we say, uh, hey, I do jujitsu, and they're like, um, um, let's see what's a good example. Uh, I haven't done jujitsu recently. I've been, I, I kind of quit in 2012. So I haven't done it in like 10 years. Kind of missed Brazilian jujitsu. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Um, uh, all, all Brazilian jujitsu players, uh, eat healthy. Oh Yeah. I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu player and I don't eat healthy. Yeah, well that means you're not a true Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu player. What fallacy is that? Uh, there's a lot of things that hurt. <laughs> a lot of things that hurt. Like I, I stopped doing it because I, I got my spine dislocated. A guy jumped on my, I was in turtle position, dude jumped on my lower back with his knee and drove it in. My vertebrae popped like that. And my wife's like, no, don't do that anymore. I couldn't walk. She's like, no, you're done. That's it. So, I, I do miss it though. Uh, agree with your wife? Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Like, I, I, I do too. I haven't done it since since then. But, like, I, I do miss it. Jiu-Jitsu is a hell of a lot of fun. No true stuff. Yeah, no true stuff. Yeah. It's not even like the guy was doing a jiu-jitsu move. He had just gotten fired for excessive violence as a um, security guard. He, uh, a person was shoplifting and he, like, tackled the person and and Target or whatever doesn't like it when you physically are aggressive towards people and he had just been fired 
and sort of took out his aggression on me. It wasn't even a real jiu-jitsu move. It wasn't even in class. It was before class. And then I ended up not able to walk for two weeks, you know, and had to go to physical therapy for years. And, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's fair enough. It's like, okay, you know, uh, I'll stop that. But I, I do miss it. That's great. Uh, what was the statement again? Um, uh, all, all jiu-jitsu people um, eat healthy. Hey, I'm a jiu-jitsu person, but I don't eat healthy. Well, yeah, but you're not a true jiu-jitsu person. You know, that's no, no true Scotsman. So why is the U.S. Army messaging me? I don't know. I hear there might be something going on in Russia. I don't know. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and to be fair, like, a lot of jiu-jitsu people are into, like, health, you know, like, drinking shakes and, like, nutrition and stuff like that. And that's, like, a pretty big chunk of the jiu-jitsu community, like, controlling their diet. And, and then there's a big chunk that are like, let's go to Brazilian barbecue <laughs> you know they just eat whatever you know take donuts and put them in the blender and drink donut smoothies i don't know like there's two wildly different camps when it comes to nutrition uh <laughs> there's a lot of beefaloes like me that eat whatever okay um uh do we do false dichotomy do we do false dichotomy in this class Yeah. Um, I won't use that one then. All right. So, um, all right. How about this? We must either invade Iraq. I know. Uh, hmm. uh, we must. We must either invade Ukraine or do nothing at all. So that'd be a false dichotomy, right? But what? What is that? Uh, what? What? thing have we studied that is similar to that you know we must either do everything we can to stop the russians in ukraine or do nothing at all what a, a cognitive bias does that tie into where it's all or nothing right let's go my boyfriend's perfect he did one thing wrong my boyfriend is horrible it's irrevocably ruined he didn't take out the trash last night Black and white thinking, yeah. So black and white thinking, false dichotomy, and all or nothing fallacy are all related to each other. And so you're not going to see two questions that are, or two answers on a question that are like, is this black and white thinking or all or, or, all or nothing? Well, no. It, like I said, I, I don't try to slice questions that, that cleanly. It will be like, is that black and white thinking or is that no true Scotsman, right? And we have to invade Ukraine is not no true Scotsman in any way, shape, or form. Like... I try to make these answers like as clear as possible. I don't, I don't put answers that are close to each other on it. Okay. Um, um, person A. Uh, there has never been a. Uh, um, uh, when when the Europeans. Uh, initiated the Colombian contact with the Native American people, uh, all the diseases f uh, went from Europe to the New World. Person B, what about syphilis? Scientists think that syphilis, uh, you know, was originated in the New World and went to Europe that way. Well, all diseases except for that one. What fallacy is that person A did? When uh, a person makes a claim, they're shown to be wrong, and so they move their claim out of the way so that they're not wrong anymore. What it, what uh, what fallacy is that called? When you make a claim, somebody says you're wrong. Oh shoot, you're right. No, what I actually meant to say was this. Yeah, moving goalposts, moving goalposts. Okay, um, it's related to no, no true Scotsman. Um, so you're not going to see both moving goalpost and no, no true Scotsman on the same question because no true Scotsman is a form of moving goalpost. Well, yeah, he's not a true Scotsman. Um, um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, John F. Kennedy said we must uh, put a man on the moon. Therefore, women cannot be astronauts because then we won't be putting a, a man on the moon. What, what fallacy is that? We must put a man on the moon. Sorry, women, you can't apply it because John F. Kennedy said man. He didn't say woman. What, uh, what fallacy is that? Equivocation. Yeah, when you're using a word. When, when, we, when we said we're going to put a man on the moon, we're talking about humans, right? Man is short for human. Sometimes. And sometimes it means uh, male gender, right? And so uh, if you equivocate between the two, then um, you can cause... Uh, the meaning, like you're you're basically using it with two different meanings, but the same word. That's equivocation. So you got to uh, uh, pay close attention to that because there's some very subtle arguments that look like they're fine, but it's act they actually come about because the word um, means two things differently in two different sentences. Um, and there's a lot of words like that in the English language, right? That are um, they could be interpreted differently. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and that's, you know, kind of an issue that I take with um, the, uh, like, in San Diego, we had the Museum of Man, and they, they renamed it to be the Museum of All because they didn't want it to be gendered language. And it's like, I mean, I kind of get what you're getting at there because it's sometimes gendered, but man is also short for human, right? And so it was kind of like, to me, it felt like an equivocation fallacy, right? Like where they're acknowledging that the name of the museum was only for men, which it's not, it's just an anthropology museum, right? Um, okay. Um, uh, Raymar, <clears throat> uh, you shouldn't be giving the answers to all these questions. Oh yeah? Well, you're giving them. Which fallacy is that? <clears throat> so I say to Raymar, Raymar, you're doing too good on chat. You're giving all the answers away. You should let other students have a chance to answer it. And Raymar responds to me, no, I, I'm, I'm being, I'm not being serious. Uh, and then he responds to me, yeah, well, you're giving the answers, professor. What, what fallacy did uh, fictional Raymar just conduct? And you can answer as well. I am definitely not picking on you for being a good student. Trust me. I, I like it when students respond. We've got uh, 13 people in chat right now, of which two, three, four, five, six are responding. So we've got a number, we've got about half the class who is not answering any of these questions. So, no, good on you. Good on you. To, yeah, to Quesa. <laughs> Your cheese. Uh, too cool, quote. All right. So, two queso. <laughs> That's a completely different fallacy. The two queso fallacy. <laughs> two quo qua. All right. So uh, it means you too, right? Well, you're doing it too. Yeah. So. Um, uh, it doesn't mean, yeah, like, you should study. Well, you should study, too. Yeah. It's an appeal to hypocrisy. And, and to be fair, sometimes appeal to hypocrisy is um, okay. Like in politics, right? Uh, hey, we're not going to... Um, we're not going to vote for your Supreme Court justice because it was nominated in the last year of the uh, president's term. Oh, yeah? Well, you voted, you know... You know and, and so there's a lot of appeal to hypocrisy that goes on between the different political parties, right? Mitch McConnell refused to um, vote, bring to a vote uh, Obama's nomination to Merrick Garland, who's now currently the Attorney General, right? Because it's the last year of Obama's presidency. Pretty much a fabricated excuse, you know, just to deny Obama a Supreme Court pick. And then when uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died in uh, the last year of Trump's term, uh, Trump nominated um, Amy Comey Barrett to the Supreme Court. And Mitch McConnell's like, 
let's do this, you know, and voted for it, you know, and, and so there was a lot of appeal to hypocrisy going on back and forth between uh, the Republicans and Democrats there because it seemed like a pretty, you know, I mean, we all know why, you know, this happened. It was just to get a Supreme Court pick, right? Like, like the, the, the everyone knows what's going on, but there's still a lot of appeals to hypocrisy going on back and forth in the media. <clears throat> and so, you know, sometimes two quote is, is okay, right? Because, you know, you're, you're not being consistent. You said this, and now you're saying this, right? So you did this, so we can do this, right? You know, you know, you were, you were mean to uh, Kavanaugh, so we could be mean to, uh, um, you know, right? so, um, yeah, two quote is used a lot in politics and it isn't even necessarily fellacious in those circumstances because you're just saying, look, you're, you're, you're behaving a certain way, so we can behave it. Uh, a certain way, you know, Katanji Brown, you know, uh, we could be mean to her because you're mean to Comey Barrett, right? So, all right. Um, yeah, so uh, if I say, if I tell you that I can tell you if a number is prime or not without factoring it, okay, so if I give you a big number. Some, some large number. I can tell you, as a computer science professor, that if I say this number is not prime, I can tell you that it's not prime with 100% accuracy. And if I tell you it is prime, I can tell you that it is 99.99999, certain that this is a prime number, without actually factoring it. You know, just, add, just add 500 digits there if you want. Okay. Whatever. 7, 8, you know, it doesn't matter. It seems impossible, right? Like, how could you know that a number is prime or not without actually knowing what the factors are? You know, this this number is three times five times seven times, you know, whatever, right? How can you know that? It seems impossible. It seems impossible to me. Therefore, I am not going to believe you. What fallacy is that? Seal chain. What fallacy is it when somebody says, well, that just doesn't seem possible to me. Therefore, that that claim is false. What fallacy is that? Uh, now, I don't understand that. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say that's false. Similar to appeal to ignorance. Appeal to ignorance is, yeah, I, I don't I don't know why something is, therefore it's false. But this one is specifically appeal to uh, personal incredulity. But yeah, appeal to ignorance would work in that case too. Um, so I don't I don't understand something, therefore it's false. Yeah, uh, it's a more s specific form of appeal to ignorance. Probably on the probably on the midterm, I'd just say yeah, I'd probably just say appeal to ignorance on it. You know, I don't understand X, therefore Y. Appeal to ignorance. Okay. I don't understand how you can tell that a number is prime or not without factoring it. Therefore, it's false. Appeal to ignorance, sure. But more specifically, appeal to personal incredulity. I personally don't understand something. Therefore, it's false. Um, now, what if um, what if I made this claim, right? That you can, and this is a true thing, by the way. Do you guys know that? Right. So we can all tell that fifteen is not prime because you can factor it into three and five, right? But doing this is exceptionally difficult for large numbers. It's exceptionally difficult. But we have the ability to tell if a number is prime or not without actually factoring it. And we can make this result as accurate as we want with just a little bit more work. So I, I make that claim. And you say, well, of course you would say that. You're a computer science professor. It is in your interest to convince all of us that prime numbers can be determined to be prime without factoring. What fallacy is that? Well, of course you would say that. Are they attacking my argument or are they attacking me? All right? So anytime uh, uh, somebody makes a claim, if the person attacks the person making the claim rather than the claim itself, that is called a ad. Yep. Good. So, um, a 
specific form of ad hominem would be the reductio ad Hitlerum, right? Which, uh, I don't know if that's in the cheat sheet, but it's funny. Reductio ad Hitlerum. Which is comparing somebody with Hitler. Which, uh, th there's, a, there's a, a rule on the internet that says as uh, arguments on the... Uh, as arguments on the internet progress, there is a asymptotically certain uh, probability that somebody will compare the other person to Hitler. Um, <laughs> as time goes on in a heated argument, the odds that the word Hitler will be dropped uh, rise in and approach 100%. So uh, that's called a reductio ad Hitler. And uh, yeah, you're behaving like Hitler right now, man. Um, Another example would be uh, of reductio ad Hitlerum is, you know, to say, well, Hitler drank water and you drink water. Therefore, you're like Hitler, you know, um, and that's that's typically done in things like gun control debates, animal rights debates, things like that. You know who else supported gun control? Hitler. You know who else like animals? Hitler. You know who else is vegetarian? Hitler. You know, and so and then that, that would be the right wing attacking the left by being like Hitler. And then, of course, the left attacks the right for being like Hitler all the time. You know, it, any any time uh, somebody disagrees, you know, it seems with uh, the the party line of the Democrats. Well, that's uh, fascist, right? Uh, fascist uh, oftentimes doesn't mean what fascism actually means. It just means it doesn't agree with the the Democrat, the, the left, especially the the most left part of the Democrat Party. Well, that's fascist, you know. And and then the right wing loves comparing the left to Hitler because. Uh, he was a vegetarian and had gun control and things like that as well. So both sides do it, and it is equally fallacious um, from both sides. So you shouldn't play CSGO. Yes, Hitler played CSGO, so you're like Hitler. Okay. You know who else is human? Hitler. So you're like Hitler. That's right. He had two eyes. Do you have two eyes? You're like Hitler. So, um... <laughs> yeah, if you give me your CSGO inventory, then uh, you're not like Hitler anymore. Not a fascist. Okay. Um, yeah, we're basically out of time. Um, see if there's any other important ones. Uh, argument for moderation we didn't do. Uh, affirming the consequent, denying the antecedent. We've hit that enough times in the first semester. Straw man, non sequitur, false generalization. Correlation is not causation. I think everyone knows that. Like, pretty much 100% of people got that one. Uh, over time, uh, you know. The number of pirates in the world has gone up, and global warming has gone up. Therefore, pirates cause global warming. This correlation is not causation. I'll give you my junkyard revolver. <laughs> um, uh, one of the one of the guys uh, I work with actually does CS:GO skins and, and makes some money on the side doing that. So I've had him come in and talk to my classes before. It's kind of cool. Um, fallacy division, fallacy composition. Yeah, let's. let's I'll, I'll do that just real fast. So if you have like a car. You know, here's a car. It's a fantastic bit of artwork. There you go. Here's a car. There you go. Uh, put a put a racing fin on the back. There you go. Add some add a scoop for more downforce on the front. Okay. So um, this is a there. So um, a fallacy of division says that which is true of the whole is true of the parts. So uh, a McLaren F1 can travel very quickly, uh, therefore the windshield of a car can travel very quickly. You know, it's like you put it on the ground and it's like, go. It doesn't, right? This would be a fallacy of division. And then a fallacy of composition is saying that which is true of the parts is true of the whole. That is a fallacy of composition. Right? And, uh, you know, um, uh, there are a lot of uh, college-educated people in the Democrat Party, therefore the Democrat Party is college-educated. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work because it's an abstract notion of a group. Abstract groups cannot have a degree. It doesn't say the Democrat Party on any college degree that I'm aware of. So, uh, give me your Karen bit, Gamma Doppler. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, so, yeah. So, fallacy of division is when you claim that which is part, that which is true about the whole, the group. You know, when you have a whole car or something like that, must be true of each individual part. Fallacy division. 
Kelsey composition, that which is true of the individual parts must be true of the whole. And you know, sometimes it is like conducting electricity. If you put together something out of things that conduct electricity, probably the whole is going to conduct electricity. But a lot of the times the car has different properties than the individual pieces in the car. Okay. A car as a whole can drive individual pieces can't, right? Even if you have an engine by itself, it'll just sit on the ground, you know, cause you have to have it attached to a transmission and a, you know, the, you know, all the other parts of the drive chain. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So that is it for today. Uh, I will work on the, um, midterm tonight. And, uh, if there's anything that I put on the, the midterm that, uh, um, that I didn't talk about today, I will talk about it on Friday, but otherwise on Friday, we're going to be covering a new, a new topic. Okay. So thanks everyone. And, uh, have fun trading your CSGO stuff. <laughs> Peace out.